Hello. I struggled a lot with what to say in this video, but being completely honest, I struggled a lot with Double Masters 2022. On the surface, Double Masters 2022 is almost everything that I might want in a reprint set. Not perfect by any means, but in isolation of price. It had needed reprints, a fun draft environment, some of the coolest and most exciting alternate art treatments I have ever seen. So why then, when I sat down to write about how excited all these things made me about Double Masters, did I feel so not excited? Was it the emphasis on Commander reprints? No. Commander is the most popular way to play Magic the Gathering these days, so focusing on the reprints that the most played format needs is exactly what a master set should be doing. Yes, you could have called it Commander Masters, but that's awesome. It's not a disappointment. As a Commander Masters set, again, in isolation of price, it's a smashing success. It's not just that Double Masters costs too much, but let me be clear. Double Masters costs too much. However, had this been released at a typical $240 per box Masters set, then I don't think anyone would really have batted an eye either way. But would it have been mind-blowing at that price? I don't think it would. How did this happen? Well, I came up with five main reasons, five very terrible decisions that Wizards of the Coast made to essentially pull the rug out from under their own product. It is not just that this is too expensive, though again, I will reiterate, yes, this is too damn expensive, but I want to talk reasonably about five key larger picture issues and decisions that Wizards of the Coast made to essentially self-sabotage Double Masters 2022. But first, a quick word about this video. This video is brought to you by Noom. Take your free 30 second quiz today at noom.com slash Tolarian community or click the link in the description to get started now. If I can get real for a moment, weight loss and health is something I have struggled with, especially since my job is a sedentary one. It's hard to eat right when you work the kind of hours that I do and getting fast food delivered is the easiest way to get through long nights editing and writing scripts. That's when I started noon and when I was able to really see a market improvement in both my weight and my health. Now, obviously we are all different, our bodies, our lifestyles, our goals. So there's no one size fits all approach to weight loss, but Noom focuses on both the tools and confidence for people to be their best selves. And most importantly, unlearn any negative associations you may have previously had with food, body, or self-perception. One of my favorite lessons so far was break the behavior chain because, well, like I said, my problem is tied to the bad behavior of just taking the easy route of ordering delivery to scarf down while I worked. And once I started using Noom and breaking that behavior, I found I could actually still eat better quality foods in healthier portions despite my long hours. For me and my personal goals are focused on overall health more than a specific number on a scale. And Noom's food, water, and exercise trackers have been fantastic over the last several months in that regards. Huge shout out, by the way, to my goal specialist and coach, who I work with through Noom. And yeah, you'll be working with real people trained in psychology and fitness and nutrition. Real people, that's great. At the end of the day, Noom is a behavior change innovator, leveraging psychology and science to help people live the healthy, fulfilling lives that they deserve. By combining the power of artificial intelligence, mobile tech, and psychology with the empathy of personal human coaches, Noom helps people live healthier lives by changing their long-term habits. So take your free free 30 second quiz today at noom.com slash Tolarian community or click the link in the description to get started now. Thank you Noom for sponsoring this video. As I talk about the ways that I feel Wizards of the Coast sabotaged Double Masters 2022, I want to be clear. I do not think they did this on purpose, nor out of any outrageous incompetence. Rather, I think the exploding success has simply blinded them to the harmful effects decisions such as these can have upon their product and their player base. I am making these criticisms not to hate on Double Masters 2022, nor Magic the Gathering, nor Wizards of the Coast, but to offer constructive criticism that I hope, through illuminating these poor decisions, maybe can lead to better course corrections down the road. I love Magic the Gathering. 
And I want to be excited about new sets like Double Masters 2022, not walk away feeling apathetic, as I mostly did. Why do I think I am not alone in this? Let's begin with... By making premium priced reprint sets filled with draft chaff, players are getting low value, non-constructed playable cards. A key concept when it comes to Double Masters. It doesn't matter if your pack contains double rares if both of those rares aren't really worth anything. And overwhelmingly, an individual pack of Double Masters is likely to contain a couple of dud rares rather than a reprint of value. And that's a huge problem, not only in a reprint set, but in a premium priced reprint set. As I edited my booster box game, I noticed how so much of the bulk of each box were packs with worthless rares and foils in them. In reality, only a couple of packs out of a box had value. Only a handful of packs out of that box carried me through to the next box. So if you're buying packs in bulk, you overall have a better shot at getting your money back in value. But individually, the odds become more and more against you the less and less you buy. We are literally at the point where Double Masters packs cost nearly double, or in some cases double, that of what Masters packs once went for. So if you are charging that much more per pack, then you have to do more with those packs to justify the price. Putting an extra rare in instead of an uncommon is not doing more if that rare is worth the same as an uncommon. This is why so many people are walking away from a set that has double the rares, but feeling like they got the same value as the average master set, because in a way, they have. Take a look at this. Double Masters has a total of 120 rares, 40 mythic rares. And compare that to a master set such as Ultimate Masters, which had 53 rares and 20 mythics. So here you're getting two per pack, but with double the rares and mythics as the regular master set, you aren't more likely to pull a money rare or a mythic. In fact, you are probably less likely because they are filling up so many of those extra rare and mythic slots with draft chaff. I think of this as eating food that is not nutrient or energy rich. You can't figure out why you feel like you've eaten a meal, but at the same time, still feel hungry. Perhaps a true double master set, one that's priced at twice what a normal pack costs, is one where you do not have a flood of draft matters cards taking up extra slots. Maybe draft might not even be a part of the card selection equation. Set boosters contain multiple rares and, as a result, are not meant to be drafted, and Wizards of the Coast has stated they are selling incredibly well, so maybe a master set that is touted as just for needed reprints, with two needed reprints in every pack, draft be damned, would help justify an already out-of-control price. And speaking of draft and an out-of-control price, that leads me to the second way this set was self-sabotaged, and that is... By making draft sets super expensive, players cannot draft them. At nearly $20 per pack, it is hard to find a draft of Double Masters for less than $50 to $60. And believe me, if your local store is offering drafts of Double Masters for less than that price, especially if they have good prize support, treasure them because economically, it is very hard to offer drafts at that price and break even. What's more, it's even harder for players to be able to afford them at these prices. Draft is, in many ways, the apotheosis of Magic the Gathering. Once the most popular way to play and enjoy the game, draft has been steadily declining, and with more and more premium products pricing players out of playing draft, I cannot blame them. After all, draft is not really a one-time rare occurrence. With most magic sets, people who draft do so frequently, treating the limited format as a puzzle to be solved, each experience a step in a larger journey. This, of course, is much more doable when draft is $12 to $15 per event with good prize support. In fact, at some stores, players who get good at draft can go infinite, selling back their prize packs and the cards they opened from one draft to pay for the next. But at the price that a draft like Double Masters requires, a price which, by the way, still leaves stores often unable to offer that good prize support without raising the cost of entry even higher, most players can maybe experience one to two drafts, and then that's it. 
That's what a normal booster box costs, after all. 100 bucks, you can maybe get two, if you're really, really lucky, double master's drafts in for the price of a normal booster box. Hey, maybe you'll crack an Imperial Seal and pay for your next draft, but you could easily open up Talran, the Sky Summoner, and Fiery Justice, and not be able to go infinite with cards like those and prices like these. And to be clear, you should not be hoping to open an Imperial Seal if you are playing a Double Masters draft for the draft experience. That's a terrible card in draft. From a pure gameplay perspective, you've just been given a lesser draft experience by opening up a card that is not going to give you a good limited experience. I'd love to see a reprint set designed just to provide needed reprints. I'd love to see a draft set designed just to provide an excellent draft experience. Can these two criteria be met in the same set? Perhaps, but Double Masters 2022 is not that set. And speaking of prices and availability, by limiting the print run, the price of boxes is subject to wild markups. A limited print run is a very different thing than the manufacturer setting a high price for a product, though the two do often go hand in hand. But when they are combined, as they are in Double Masters, Wizards of the Coast setting a high price for the product and then limiting the print run of said product, the result is higher prices than intended. By choosing to have a small print run instead of printing to store demand, they are ensuring that even those players who may be willing to pay that high price will not all be able to do so because there simply won't be enough product to go around, and thus, markups. This is often something that gets blamed on local game stores. And while there are indeed some crappy stores out there, the vast, and I mean vast majority, simply struggled to get enough Double Masters products to sell to their customer base. So combine that in an era where Magic the Gathering's player base and popularity is at an all-time high, and you have a recipe for high prices and low feelings. If Magic's population is exploding, and it is, then shouldn't store allocations for a product like this be increasing from previous master sets. With a small print run, singles prices do not often decrease by much, and thus the needed reprints remain needed reprints so that they can be reprinted again in the next overpriced set. The result? Your needed reprint set is not doing enough to lower prices of individual cards, and it is encouraging even more exaggerated prices on the product that is on shelves. This is why I think we are seeing such value in a set, but a reaction of such apathy towards it. Prices aren't coming down enough, and the product has passed a point of reasonable affordability regardless of the potential long-term value within. Now, Wizards of the Coast, of course, could take myriad steps to ensure that stores maintain a product within an intended price range, but that does mean they'd have to print enough of it to fulfill demand. It also means they'd have to actually tell you what they want that product to cost, which of course brings us to... No MSRP means more players getting gouged. How much is this supposed to cost? Eternal Masters boxes had an MSRP of $240 a box, Modern Masters 2015, an MSRP of $240 a box. Modern Masters 2017, an MSRP of $240 a box. Iconic Masters, Masters 25, each had an MSRP of $240 a box. As of the filming of this video, Double Masters 2022 is selling online at marketplaces for $349.99 a box? What? Is this intended or is it marked up? I believe it benefits the customer to know what the intended price of a product should be. If Wizards of the Coast is intending this to be $340 per box, then customers should know that they have set the price that high and be able to express feedback about pricing to the company. What if they intended this to be perhaps only $270 per box and the scarcity of supply has resulted in an across-the-board markup? Well, again, this is beneficial to know so that we can focus on demanding a higher print run to keep prices in 
in line with the more reasonable cost. I think it's obvious why there's no MSRP anymore. It absolves Wizards of the Coast of direct guilt and criticism. The player base's ire is more easily directed at stores this way, the same stores not being given large allocations and often making a meager profit per box. But there's an effect all of these things have not only on Double Masters, but also on non-premium sets as well. And I think in many ways, it is the most important aspect to discuss and recognize about the self-sabotage Wizards of the Coast does not realize it's doing. By paywalling the most in-demand parts of your game, you douse player enthusiasm for that game. You know that whole, why wasn't Dockside Extortionist reprinted in Streets of New Capenna or Baldur's Gate or one of the Commander Precons discussion that had been done to death? I want to point out the reason that Dockside Extortionist issue was talked about so much. It was that it was indicative of a larger issue, and it perfectly encapsulated many, many other examples. Why wasn't Smothering Tithe, a card that was originally printed into Standard, not reprinted into a Standard set? Well, because why put it in a $4 booster when you can put it in the $18 boosters? Why wasn't Sensei's Divining Top reprinted in our recent return to Kamigawa? Why wasn't Ariel of the War Leader, a card first printed in a standard set, reprinted when we recently returned to Ravnica? Why won't Consecrated Sphinx be reprinted in our inevitable return to Phyrexia? For the same reason as Dockside, and on and on and on. Once available in $4 packs, but never again will the regular set carry these coveted cards. Cavern of Souls, another card that was first printed in a standard set, encapsulates what is happening here. Shifted up from rare to mythic, its lowest price still is $60. It was reprinted in Double Masters, and prior to that Ultimate Masters, and prior to that Modern Masters 2017, and has been on the list, and has been an expedition, and yet despite all of this, the price maintains itself. This is working as intended. To reprint this at rare as it once was in $4 boosters would likely tank the price. So why would Wizards of the Coast want to do that? Look at all the mileage, all the $9.99 packs, all the $13.99 packs, and now all the $17.99 packs that they can justify charging that much for because it contains cards like Cavern of Souls. It ties all of these other points together. The lack of MSRP, the small print run, the duds that are just justified as being there for draft. It's all intended to allow them to reprint these cards without actually increasing their availability or decreasing their price. It's a paywall around game pieces, and the effect this has is growing dissatisfaction, growing frustration, and worst of all, growing apathy. You are teaching your player base that the best stuff, the most in-demand stuff, will always be reserved for the most expensive products. Everyone joked that this set was really Commander Masters, but think about this. If it is Commander Masters, and yeah, let's be honest, it's Commander Masters, then they have taken the most popular format, identified the most in-demand cards for that format, and instead of making those cards affordable and accessible, chose to charge the most they could in a way that was designed not to lower the price so that they could do it again. What effect is that going to have long term? Look, I don't want all cards to be worthless, and I do understand Wizards of the Coast has to make money. I absolutely acknowledge that there will be, and maybe even should be, premium products in a collectible card game like Magic the Gathering. But there is a point where you kill the Golden Goose, and I think Wizards of the Coast needs to take a long, hard look at these decisions and understand that just because sales continue to climb, just because each quarter tops the next, that does not mean that you are not making mistakes, and it does not mean you are not inadvertently self-sabotaging products like Double Masters. But those are just my thoughts on this issue, and now I want to hear from you. Were you excited for Double Masters? How much of it did you buy? Do you think the set was a success, or if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. Remember that the Telerian Community College Discord server is completely free for those looking for games.
So if you want to get some webcam games of Commander, Pioneer, Popper, Standard, Modern, or whatever, this is an awesome community to join and do so in. Again, the Looking for Game and General Discussion sections of the TCC Discord are 100% free, and I'll provide links to that in this video's description. Come on, let's get a game. Thanks once again to Noom for sponsoring this video. Remember, Noom helps people live healthier lives by changing their long-term habits, by combining the power of artificial intelligence, mobile tech, and psychology with the empathy of personal coaches. So you can take your free 30-second quiz today at noom.com slash community, or click the link in the description to get started now. Thank you, Noom. time on Shuffle Up and Play. We flash back to the year 2000. Voxy, streamer extraordinaire. This is Kai Buddha's winning Pro Tour deck, but I've also brought with me another ancient relic from that time. Brian Kibler himself, Pro Tour Top 8, your Red Zone deck. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> destroy target enchantment. I will destroy Parallax Wave. That is annoying, but fair. I just love that if you tap his City of Brass, it does him a damage. Uh, who's Kyle Hill? He your was just thinking about your that. Your reaction there. tells yeah. me that there could be mm. perhaps a, a pump in that hand. There's always a pump with Brian Kibbs, baby. <laughs> <laughs>